Okay, the recording has just started. Thank you for joining the class. Um, let's just pray together and we will get started uh, in this class on church and ministry administration. Okay, good somebody. So Manu, welcome back. I uh, I thought you were going on e-learning, but you decided to come back here or uh, move back from e-learning? Yes, sir. Okay, okay, that's fine. Good. Why don't you just pray and we'll get started. Loving Heavenly Father, we just come into your presence of Father God. Thank you for this wonderful morning. Thank you for your protection over nine year, nine months of Father God Jesus. Thank you for helping us to enter this 10th month of Father God Jesus. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Father God, this um, this morning, oh, Father God, as we gathered here to, to study about the administration of Father God, you lead us and guide us, oh, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray, Father God. Amen. 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 Thank you, Daryl. Thank you, Chuan. Um, let's get um, started. Um, we'll just quickly review. So this week... Uh, we started talking about accounting, budgeting, and uh, uh, the finance side of the ministry. On Wednesday, uh, we just gave uh, a biblical perspective, just some principles but that should guide us as we um, talk about uh, ministry or church finances, uh, money, and so on. Uh, uh, so, uh, we, uh, you know, we, we're going to, uh, uh, so we, we did that. We talked about all the biblical principles, not all, but some of the principles that guide us. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to move into the practical side of uh, church ministry finances. And um, I kind of try to give us a little bit of an overview. Uh, we won't be able to finish everything today. We probably will take two more classes, two more lectures. Uh, I'll give us kind of a little bit of overview. Then next week, we'll continue on this next two lectures. Uh, I want to, to, you know, kind of give us an overview, different aspects of um, the finance, and then also show you samples of how we do it at APC. Now, uh, uh, just a little disclaimer. Uh, what, what I'm sharing with you is a lot of what we do at uh, All People's Church as a church and a ministry. Uh, but this is not how every church or every ministry does it, right? Um, uh, one, for, for, for instance, uh, one immediate difference uh, is that uh, in many churches, uh, they have committees, they have church committees. So that means they have a, a group of people. Uh, committees will oversee different ministry areas. Now at APC, we don't have committees. We uh, either we run it as teams. We just have teams and team leaders who head up those, or we have ministries where that are led by ministry leaders, or we have for the functioning we have departments or and people who head up those departments. So we don't uh, work in a, you know, a, a typical committee driven way. So uh, there are some churches that have, uh, that are driven by committees for, for various things, but we don't do that. We have teams or we have ministry ministries or we have departments and each one is led by uh, a team leader or a ministry leader or a department head or a head of that area. So that's that's kind of an immediate difference. Uh, uh, and then secondly, uh, you know, uh, we uh, at APC, we've tried to be more, you know, borrow more from a corporate side rather from a traditional church side uh, of functioning, uh, even in this area of finance. finance. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to be sharing today and then we continue next week uh, is, you know, uh, I'll give us an overview of how we've set up things at APC as a church, as a ministry. But uh, at the very beginning, I'm making this disclaimer that uh, this is not the only way to do it. 
um, there are other ways, other ways other churches would do it, mainly by committee, and a committee would have a treasurer, uh, uh, you know, different uh, posts or offices held by people, and they would then uh, manage how money is used, so on. So there are differences, but I'll just share what we are doing and hopefully you can take, you know, whatever's useful for your church or your ministry and and uh, uh, use that. OK. And of course, feel free to ask questions and, you know, we can discuss uh, things. So uh, uh, finance, accounting, budgeting, you know, la last week we kind of uh, laid the importance of why, you know, we shared the, why this is so important and how it can affect churches and ministries and so on. And we went over these these uh, five principles, key principles. We did that, not last week, but uh, on, on Wednesday, right? So just to quickly review, you share a God-given vision and let people give towards that. You know, God, just trust that God will move on people's hearts to give towards the vision. Uh, the other principle is we serve people spiritually and they will so financially. So God has you know, ordained that if you help people spiritually, they will give financially and then you use that money to take care of the needs of the people and so on. Uh, we have to be good stewards of money along with spiritual things. So these are not separate. God sees them as equally important. Uh, be accountable to the people who have given. So... Um, just because somebody's given, we can't say, okay, uh, goodbye, I don't care about you. No, they are the ones who gave. We have to be answerable to them. If they ask any questions, we have to give them, you know, the information, the proper response. And lastly, we also have to be accountable to government authority, civic authority. So these are just simple principles we have to keep in mind as a church or a ministry. Okay, so let's get into the practical side. Now, the first thing I would say is, you know, use a software system, right? Now, when we start, when APC started, uh, this was in way back 2001, February, uh, we, you know, we had a notebook where we wrote down on paper uh, what, were the, what was the offering that was cut, came in on Sunday. So every Sunday, a small piece of paper, <laughs> I mean, in the notebook, one page, you know, this was the offering that came in. Uh, very small amounts, and so it was recorded there. And then, but from the very beginning, from 2001, uh, we start we started using a software system. Now, in India, uh, one of the common accounting software that's used by small uh, businesses organizations is called Tally. Right. That's in India, and it's customized for uh, to meet the Indian regulations, Indian government regulations. Right, so it's easy to produce the kind of reports and things that are needed within India. So, like this, you find out what software is suitable for wherever you are working. Now, Tally is uh, is not very expensive. Uh, I don't know what the current rate is, but when we started for twenty five thousand rupees, we got one license, and we started like that. Uh, there, are, there are free accounting software packages that you can download and use, or you can use some that's web-based if you're interested. So that's also there. But uh, these are not uh, uh, tailored for the Indian market. So uh, you know the, that reporting part will not be there. Now, uh, I just want to say something uh, is that, you know, in the early years, we did not have anybody in-house to do the accounting. So I would just write things in a notebook uh, or collect the bills for whatever we've uh, paid, or made purchases or things. I would just keep it. And then uh, there was an accountant, a person who came from an accounting firm. Uh, she would come and uh, she would just spend one hour a week those days that there was hardly any work, just one hour a week, she would just enter everything in the system, make sure everything is, you know, check the bank account, check everything. Yeah, it's fine. Her job was done. So that was how we started. So we didn't have an accountant full time with the church. There was just a person like came from the accounting firm that we, 
who were handling or doing the accounting for us. That person would come once a week for just one hour, finish her work and go. Then slowly, uh, you know, as the, you know, as the church grew, and as uh, there was, there were more transactions, more things happening. Uh, we had uh, again the same, same. We stayed with the same accounting firm throughout. So from beginning till now, the same external accounting firm. That person would come maybe one day, spend a whole day, do all the accounting, make sure everything's there, all the files, paperwork, paper, everything's done. So it extended. It became like okay, one day. It required one day to do all the work. But again, we didn't have any in-house staff. It was just done outside. Uh, a person would come and go. Uh, then later on, what happened was we had somebody in-house who would, uh, this person was not an accountant, but she would just collect all the bills and collect all the needed documents, keep it ready. The external person, so now uh, over time, the, the, the uh, external accountant would come. He would come two days a week, if needed, three days a week. And he would, you know, he would, everything was already prepared, meaning everything, all the all the bills, all the, everything was kept ready. So he would come, he would check everything, he would enter everything into the tally, accounting software. He would uh, check the bank accounts, make sure everything is kept right. So, you know, and we continued like that uh, till uh, uh, you know, for the I think for the first fifteen years or sixteen years, that's how it was. We never had an in-house accountant uh, because uh, uh, it was enough to have an external accountant come in for you know, like I said, two days or three days every week, do the work. It was finished. It was done. Uh, and then only, you know, after fifteen, sixteen years of being in existence. Uh, did we feel the need to have a full-time person uh, as an accountant? No. Uh, 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 the, 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 the number of transactions increased. Uh, the number of staff also increased. So we had to, you know, the, the, the salaries of more people and their personal details had to be managed. Um, we also had uh, more vendors who needed to be paid. So there was, you know, bills coming in and people had to keep being paid. Uh, so at that point, we said, okay, we need a full-time person to handle the money, uh, the finance of the church. So uh, the point is we didn't start big. We started very small with one hour of work a week to now, you know, uh, there's a full-time person and we, uh, there's some other, other people also involved. I will, I will mention that a little later. So that's, that's, so, you know, you grow with time. As, as the church grows, ministry grows, your accounting department will also grow. Now, uh, you don't need to know this. Uh, this is, uh, uh, you know, this is what the accountant will do. Uh, basically, uh, almost all organizations, uh, financial management, the standard is a double entry bookkeeping method. Uh, you don't have to worry about this. This will be taken care of by your accountant and by your software system. Uh, basically, every every transaction, uh, there it's recorded as a debit and a credit because money is taken out from somewhere and it is put in somewhere. It's a double entry. Uh, so that's called a double entry system. And uh, it's this whole uh, way, this whole way of doing it is called a general ledger. So it's almost like a, it's, it's a physical, it's a term, a physical book term, a general ledger. So in a general ledger, uh, I just want to you know go to the part that is of importance, which is uh, uh, every uh, every general ledger, has uh, the individual sub-ledger accounts, okay? Sub-ledger account, that's the part that you need to know. Or, uh, you know, people may use different terms for it. Uh, it's a chart of accounts, some people call it. 
some may just refer to it as a header or some may refer to it as sub accounts or sometimes even call it projects so basically in a general ledger that has this double entry bookkeeping method you have account heads account heads okay to which money goes in and goes out that's a credit and a debit to that head so example we have a general fund account okay so this is an account head or a sub ledger head what is this that means when people give contributions you know if they don't say what the money is uh, they don't specify uh, the money is meant for this particular thing like example in a, you know nowadays people could give money and they say okay please use it for supporting pastors in north india so they are saying use that money to support churches or pastors in north india so that that's that is a specific account head okay uh, or a le ledger head ledger account or whatever you, pro you can call it a project you can call it a header you can call it an account head right so that's a very specific thing so that means the credit goes there and then when you take money out from there it goes to to support the passes it's debited sent out right it's it, it's all with that in with respect to that particular fund that particular project or ledger head right but if people don't specify they just make a contribution it'll all go to the general fund because it has not been specified you know they just gave to the church so you have a general fund account that you that's one of your heads and money comes into that and money goes out of that so there's a credit to debt okay but at the same time you will have many other funds or ledger heads many other okay example would be by church location you know so for example we you could do we have north south east west mangalore uh, then we have uh, you know these churches outside and in, around india so you could do it by church location i uh, we also have by ministry area so youth ministry children's ministry uh, publications that are that, that's our books a media television then we used to do television things like that and sometimes it also be set it up by projects so that means uh, sometimes we do you know a project which is like a you know that may run for a couple of months so example recently we did this uh, covid relief project okay so that is a particular head a fund account or a ledger head in our whole accounting system okay in the whole general ledger that's a particular head what is it covid 19 relief project relief project so when people give money it will be and they say it's for that it will go to that project and then when we take money out from there it will go out so although physically there's only one bank account or not one we have a couple uh, i think we have two two bank two or three bank accounts uh, physically there are you know a few bank accounts overall uh, the money is treated in a general ledger with account heads to which money is credited and taken out okay that's all you need to understand because when you see your financial report which i will show you next week um, it will be based on this so when you get a snapshot when you get a summary of you know how the organization is doing financially or your monthly monthly report it will come under these heads so you know immediately how these things are doing how each chart of account how each uh, line item in your chart of accounts is doing you know okay uh, so much came in for covid relief so much went out for covid relief uh, things like that okay so you just need to know also this will help you in your budgeting and i will share with you a little later on how we do our budgeting meaning example youth ministry okay so youth ministry is one of the ministry areas 
it is a ledger head. So now people don't usually give money specifically for youth ministry. Nobody does that. It's very rare. But we may just, for example, we may collect money uh, when we have a youth camp or when we have some youth event. Okay, there, that's the only time money comes in, which is specific to that area of ministry. But most often it doesn't happen. What happens? Money goes from general fund to that ministry area. That's how most of it comes, right? There will be money coming in to the general fund. And from there, it goes to, you know, various things, whether it's church locations or whether it goes to ministry areas. So we are talking about youth ministry. So money will go from here to youth ministry. So when you get your uh, report, monthly report, or I'm uh, sorry, I was talking budgeting. I'm getting like, a, sorry. Uh, so when you're doing your budgeting, what happens on a 12-month basis, now, you know, uh, in India, the financial year is a little different. Uh, it's not based on the calendar. It goes from uh, uh, April 1st to March 31st. That's our financial year. So it's a little different from the calendar year. Now, in some countries, the financial year and calendar year are the same. Anyway, so whatever the, your 12-month period is, so over that 12-month period, you look at, okay, what was my expense for this ministry area, youth ministry? What did we spend on it? So, you know, over the year, over the 12-month period, there'll be different things taking place under youth ministry or under publications or under whatever. But when you look at that report, you know, okay, in the last financial year, the last 12-month period, we spent... X amount of rupees for youth ministry. So therefore, for the next year, this is how much we must budget. Right now, you may you may also know that okay, uh, we are going to the ministry is going to be more or less the same. We're going to be doing the same similar things, same things. Nothing special has been planned. So uh, 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 the increase will be minimal you know the budget increase maybe you keep it to uh, maybe 10 percent 15 percent increase for the next year for that ministry area but sometimes you may plan something big hey this year last year we didn't do it this year we're going to do a big youth conference so okay therefore i need to budget you know sizable amount more for that but where is the money coming from it's coming from your general fund it's going to there Okay, so having these heads is very important because that is how you're going to manage your money, right? Otherwise, if everything, if you have only one head called general fund and money just goes out from there, then you won't know uh, where it was used and you won't be able to plan for future things. Okay, was the money from here used for, how much was used for church location? How much was used for different ministries? How much was used for projects? You won't know that. Okay, so the point I want to get across for us, you don't have to worry about the details, but you need to understand this part, which is in your accounting, you need to tell your accountant, hey, see the accountant won't know this. The accountant is not going to know that your church has 10 different ministries or your, uh, your uh, you know, the accountant doesn't know these things about your church. So you as a pastor or a leader must tell the accountant, okay, we have a general fund account, but I also want you to create other ledger headers, heads, such as, you know, whatever, youth ministry, children's ministry, uh, North Church, South Church, East Church, West Church, the Central Church, okay, media ministry, television ministry, uh, you know, whatever you want these heads to be. And so you, you should tell them. And sometimes you will, like I said, you may create new projects, you may start new ministries, and uh, you may also retire some ministry areas. That means you're no longer continuing in that. But whatever was done there will be recorded. It will always be there. Okay, so this part... You understood? If you understood, okay, we're ready to go forward. 
any questions or maybe I didn't explain clearly enough, uh, you're welcome to ask, please. Is that okay? Very simple, but you need to understand that. Everybody understood? Okay. Yes, well. so, okay, fine. So we're moving forward. Okay, so that's basic thing as far as, and all of this is, you know, you just set it up in the software system. Your accountant will set it up for you. You tell them what your church is doing, what your ministry is doing. Uh, they will get it set up, okay? Next is your department. Now, how do you set up your department? What are the kind of people you need? And so on, okay? Now, uh, once again, this is how we are doing it at APC. Uh, it is. Uh, it will be very different. Uh, I, I would say, uh, I'm not saying very, but it would be somewhat different from how other churches may run it. Uh, they may run it a little differently. And uh, we have tried to adopt more of a corporate type of setting into the church functioning. Okay. So, uh, like uh, I gave you a little a little run through on the history that is we didn't necessarily have a department you know it was just an external uh, so we had an external for a long time we had only an external accountant right this accountant would come depending on the hours needed handle everything for us go on then we uh, put one person in place uh, uh, I wouldn't call her an internal auditor yet, but she was more of a person who would collect all the information internally, keep it ready for the accountant. So she was, you know, more of an admin type person, uh, internal admin, account admin, uh, who collected all the, you know, so people would send, give the bills to her, the vendors would send the bills to her, the... Uh, the um, uh, uh, she knew all the staff who had to be paid and what the salaries were and so it was more of an internal account admin who kept all the things ready uh, the external accountant came and did all the work uh, paid did the payroll or paid all the vendors did the work and went okay so that was the next step but, sorry, from the very first year, from the very first year, there was also an external auditor. So what is this? That means this auditor is a different company. So it is not the accounting firm from where this accountant comes. It's a separate firm, a separate accounting firm those people will come and check what has been done by these people, the accountant. So initially it was done once a year. Okay, there wasn't much. So once a year was enough. They came, they checked everything. Uh, they signed off on, okay, if all, everything is fine. You know, they check all the bills, they check all the transactions, incoming, outgoing transactions. So everything has to, you know, match good. Work is done. They will sign it off. They will give us an audited report for the end of the year. That means that 12-month period, everything has been checked. Everything is in good condition. Fine. So we had an external auditor who would do that. And like I said, in the early early years, uh, once a year was enough. Okay. Then as time passed by, uh, we ha hired a full-time internal accountant. So he basically took over the admin role as well because everybody you know, sent their bills to him, expense things to him, he handled. So basically it became a full-time job. So we had a full-time person, an internal accountant. Uh, so. And um, we had an external accountant come so our present working is like this okay, right now. So we have an internal accountant who handles all the accounting work, 
internally. The external accountant comes once a week and the internal accountant will give everything to him and he will put it into the software system. Okay, he enters everything into the software system, checks everything first. That means uh, all the money that came in to the bank accounts, all the money that went out of from the bank accounts should be, you know, the, all the money that going went out should be validated by bills, right? Okay, that means these were paid money that was paid to a vendor, money that was paid for salary, uh, money that was paid for um, purchase of certain things. Everything has, there are bills. This external accountant checks everything on a weekly basis uh, and then enters it into the software system. Then on a monthly basis, every month, this external accountant will generate a report, actually two reports, and I'll show you what it looks like. Uh, an income expense report, he, uh, so two reports he, he will generate based on, and, and we will look at it next week. Um, he will generate two reports based on everything that happened that month, Plus, the report will have the current balances of all the accounts, all the, the we talked about the ledger heads, so special projects. So, you know, you will see. You know, you, there's an overall snapshot. That means high level. So much came, so much went. But then you also see by projects, okay, building projects, so much money is there, this, you know, whatever. So, so you get an overall view. You know, in, in two spreadsheets, you get an overall view of the financial status of the organization. So he sends it, and that's what I look at. So I don't look at what is happening on a day-to-day -day basis. I don't see what's happening on a weekly basis. I only look at the monthly reports, right? So as a pastor, as a leader, uh, you are busy with your ministry, you're busy with, you know, doing all of those things. So you can't be involved in the day-to-day -day checking and all that. So you leave it to these people. On a monthly basis, you look at it. Now, but this external accountant is the one who has to tell you that everything is in good order, right? Now, sometimes when I look at the uh, reports, I say, hey, something is not here. No, something's not right. It, this has not been you know, maybe, like I said here, it may not have been put under the right head. Some something is wrong. We, we we did not spend so much from that head. You know, so I I raise flags. I ask questions based on what I see. Uh, now I'm not saying I look, I sit and spend the whole day looking at it. I will look at it within you know a couple of minutes. I look at it. I can immediately see something is right or some. I mean, something is wrong. Then I raise a flag. But otherwise, I would look at it. In those few minutes, I'm able to see like everything is fine, things okay, okay, no worry. Right, so it's not like I spend hours on it, no, quick. But we are depending on the internal accountant and the external accountant to make sure everything is in good order. So this is how it happens on a monthly basis. Then the external audit so there's an another audit that's done and we do it twice a year so you remember we used to do it once a year before now we do it every six months so every six months everything is checked in detail so so you you see now on a weekly basis there's a check that's happening because weekly basis this account internal accountant has to give everything to the external accountant Second, on a monthly basis, everything is tallied and a report reports are generated. Then every six months, again, another audit is done. It means once again, we're checking everything for a six month period. Is it okay? Is everything okay? Right. And if there are sometimes, you know, okay, well, what happened here? What happened? Okay, you've got to find answers. Where was that money spent? Well, hopefully, we've not had any major issues. Uh, in fact, I, yeah, 
in all these years, we've not had any major issues. We've not had any problems. At the most, it may be you know wrong headings. Money has been taken out of the wrong header or credited to the wrong header. Okay, readjust, change that. Uh, sometimes, um, um, yeah. So those kind of things we'll have to do, make corrections. But most of it, otherwise, things have been good. Uh, what was I saying? Yeah. So twice a year, the Excel auditor comes, does, and at the end of the 12 month period, which is usually the end of our Indian financial year, uh, a few months after that, uh, the external auditor will generate an audited report for the previous 12 months, say that, look, we have checked everything, everything is fine, they sign off on it, and that audit, the summary of that audited report is released to the public. It's put up on our website. I will, I will share that with you uh, later. So this is where we are. Now, what we are going to be adding is, we're going to be adding an internal auditor. This now this is again I felt it's needed because things are becoming very big now, meaning it's bigger than what it used to be. There are a whole lot more, whole lot more money coming in, a whole lot more transactions happening, a whole lot more vendors are being contracted. Uh, it's getting much bigger. So we need to become more tighter in our control of what's happening. So that's why I want Another intern, we're going to have another internal auditor who will join us. We're going to look for this person. And this person is going to do an overall check on a daily basis of what's happening. Okay. And also manage all our vendors to, to vet our vendors. That means, you know, because vendors are being paid. And some vendors will be paid big amounts because of the kind of work they do. Uh, so money is going out. So this auditor has to scrutinize and, you know, vet those vendors, make sure that everything is okay, and uh, then approve them, and then payments can go. So we're going to add another ch level of check, safety, for the well-being of the uh, organization. So, so slowly we are growing. Now, uh, right now, the purchase of uh, things are approved. Uh, either by me or by the head of the department. That means the person heading it, for example, IT. So if somebody wants to buy, you know, somebody needs a computer, they need some hardware, they need what the, so that the head of IT um, right now, Spurgeon, he would check, he would check the prices, compare prices, and he would make the purchase or approve the purchase. Uh, similarly, when it has to do with some other ministry area, it is left to that person heading it up to make sure that, okay, yeah, this is the right thing to buy or this is the right thing to spend and approve the purchase. So there, there's somebody, the head of that ministry, the head of the department, or in some cases myself, uh, we somebody has to approve the purchasing, then things are purchased. So that's basic uh, uh, how the finance department works at APC right now. Okay, uh, I'll just say one more thing and I'll pause for questions. Uh, something to keep in mind in uh, throughout what you do with money is everywhere have at least two people involved you know have at least two people at least if you have three it's okay but have at least two people involved uh, everywhere and as we get into the actual you know basic things of offering contribution and other things you we will we will see this happen many times but this is a rule or a simple rule of thumb to keep in mind for purchasing, two people, uh, you know, see and approve it. Uh, should should think about what's you know. Okay, there's a request coming in from a person who's checked out the window, but somebody else has to also check before the accountant, and the accountant also check. So, at least two people involved in 
the accounting process in each step of the way. Central rule, okay? It is for safety. In case one person misses something, the other person can pick it up. You know, uh, maybe they didn't scrutinize a vendor, maybe uh, a bill came that was a duplicate or it's coming twice. Or, you know, when you have so many bills coming and you, you know, sometimes you can make a mistake, you know, so you have to be careful. So if you have checks happening, two people involved on every step of the accounting process, uh, that's a little safety measure that we can put uh, to prevent any mishap. Okay, so everybody so far with me, maybe I can even do one more section. All right, let me pause here and see if everybody's okay. Any questions? Any questions? Any so far, anyone? Okay, all right, let's just do one more, cover one more section and before we have to close then. Okay, so now let's talk about offerings, all right? Now, uh, in the early years, most of the offering or contributions was given in the offering bag. A few people, would do it through direct deposit, that means through the bank. Uh, there would be checks and cash given in the offering bags. So that was the usual early days for, for a long time. Uh, checks or cash put in the offering bags. Uh, that's how the contributions would come. A few people would do direct deposit to the bank. But now, especially you know from the time from 2019 uh 20 2020 when you know the COVID situation happened where there was no receiving of offerings physically everybody moved online so which is a very good thing so now if you look at the offering counting process so you have to have a very strict counting process so when the offering is received, uh, and this information was given to us by our, you know, the external accounting firm, they are the ones who told us to put all this in place. I mean, we didn't know how to do all this, but they advised us and we followed their advice right from the very beginning. So here's what they told us to do. They said, money must be counted at the venue right after the service. It must be counted by a team of people. So at least three or four people are sitting. It should be done in a, space where things are visible right so people are there you can see that it's it's uh you know that means there's some visibility somebody's watching the counting the money it has to be written in the notebook uh all the denominations here you know so you have 500 rupee notes 100 rupee or 2000 rupee notes whatever the denominations this is what came checks these are checks that came. And the envelopes people gave, where people wrote those also. Everything has to be put together, put in a seat and signed off by two people who have been part of the counting team, put in an envelope, and the sealed envelope comes to the church office. Church office, once again, it's opened. Everything is once again tallied. And they also write, this is what we received. So it has to match. And then uh, that is that um, all of that is taken and deposited. When you're doing a deposit in the bank, the depositing, the bank also provides the deposit slips. So the deposit slips should match. So you've got three levels of checks. One was written at the venue, one was written in the office, and one came from the bank. All the three should match. Then all of that information goes into your accounting system, okay? Now, even though we had such a tight thing in place, I can tell you at one point, somebody was stealing money from the church offering. 
So what happened, this happened some years ago, and I'm not saying this uh, to scare anyone, but this actually happened. And I was so sad this happened. So we had this accounting team at, this happened at Central, who would sit and count money. And, uh, you know, so there was a group of people, so they will open the envelopes in front of everybody, uh, cash put in the thing, envelopes kept here. Then everything is tallied, right? You count all the things, envelopes match, everything sent. Now, there was a lady who was part of this team. Now, the reason I'm sharing this is you cannot be too careful about things. And you must never be trusting of people. Accounting is one thing that cannot run on trust. Accounting has to be done based on numbers that are written, actual numbers. So don't trust your accountant because you can't run your accounting department on trust. It has to be run on actual numbers. So here's what happened. So this lady, Uh, she kind of somehow took charge of the the group, right? So she said, she began to insist that she would be the only one who would open the envelopes. Now the other people obliged, okay, she wants to open the envelopes, okay, fine. But that was actually, she was setting herself up to do something. Now, usually anybody can open the envelope. You put the money into the uh, box and you keep the envelope aside. Anybody can do it. But she started insisting that she was the only one who would take all the envelopes and open them and put it. Now, what happened was one particular Sunday, she, so there were envelopes given. Now, you see, if the whole envelope disappears, Nobody will know that amount actually came in because there is no envelope, there is no cash. So it's not even accounted for at that level. So what happened was one particular Sunday, this, uh, you know, so this lady was supposed to do this, you know, whatever she did. Now we don't, so she must have taken an envelope, put it directly in her purse. She opened the other envelopes and the accounting was done. But that same day, a person had put, uh, somebody had put in an envelope with 50,000 rupees into the offering. For whatever reason, that person called the church and said, you know, this is my name. I have put an amount of 50,000 rupees. This is the envelope to the denominations. I want to make sure it reached the church office because usually nobody puts that big amount in the offering. Those big amounts would be transferred directly to the bank. Um, you know, usually people put in small amounts, put small cash amounts, things like that. But that particular Sunday, this lady did it. She called the church office. Then we checked, 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 said, no, it's not there. But that person said, look, this is what I did. This is what I have put. The money is, uh, you know, was put in the box. So immediately we called this lady, the lady in the offering team. Hey, can you come and meet us? What happened? So and so has put this amount of money. That's what they've said. That money did not come. What happened? That lady disappeared. She never came back to church. And she was, you know, so then that whole thing came out that, hey, she was controlling. She was saying she would be the only person who would open up the envelopes. And now we knew what was happening. Now, it is very sad. I was very sad when I heard it. I was hoping that, you know, 
hopefully this was her only time that she did it. We have no evidence. That's why then from then on we said, okay, guys, you got to sit next to a CCTV and do this and all those kind of precautionary measures. We said, okay, we need two people standing and watching the counting team, all those measures we tried to take. But I'm sharing this incident because it happened here at APC where we tried to be very careful. We tried to put all the things in place and somebody was still trying to find a loophole to take church money. And they, you know, you almost feel like, hey, you're stealing money, church money. But somebody didn't have any calms about it. They just did it. And when they were confronted, they just disappeared. Now, we left it at that. We didn't, you know, we just became more strict, cautious in how that offering counting was happening at the premises. But uh, the message I want to get across is, look, you can never be too careful, you know, in this part of receiving things. The safest is direct deposit. So when we moved completely or, you know, to direct deposit, I was very happy. No chance of money being lost anywhere. People just put it directly in the church account. Uh, it's all done. It's all good. Okay. So I'm going to stop here. I, I know we have a lot to talk about uh, into the, uh, as we go into the details. And, and next week, I'll show you some examples or reports and so on. But I, uh, this is an important area of ministry. Um, it's, uh, it is uh, something you have to be very careful of. And you, you can never be too careful um, in this area. Okay. Any questions before we close? Okay. All right. Uh, no questions. Uh, we will uh, continue this next week, get into a little, a little more of the details. Let's wrap up. Somebody could uh, close in prayer and dismiss us, please. So anyone could pray. Go ahead. Well, thank you, Lord, for this wonderful time that you've given us, Father, that we could learn today and understand the financial uh, part of it, Father. But I pray that we would apply it uh, wherever we are, Father. I also pray that, that we would be stewards of uh, money and the skills that you have put in our lives, Father. I pray that, that we would live before you, Father. The hearts uh, would be right before you and before all the men's, Father. Mm. Lord, uh, we just submit uh, the entire class into your hand, Father, and the rest of the day into your hand. Uh, pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. I'll uh, see you all again next week. Have a good Thanks. weekend. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. We'll continue this next week.